Okay, so I'm here with the guys from Rival Sons. How's it going? It's going really good, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, it's going good, man. So, uh, High Voltage here, which is a festival which is sort of billed as being by the fans and for the fans, so it must be sort of quite a good one to get on looking at things that way. Yeah, we've been really happy to be on and excited. Uh, you know, we definitely have the support from Classic Rock, and we've been looking forward to this for a good time now. And you actually kind of, although this is a festival of parents, you've been on the road with Priests so far, I understand you mean sort of doing some of their dance as well. Yeah, How's well, that been going? We actually started out in America, yeah. came across our, our own country, and then into Canada, and then um, back down into New York, and then uh, into Europe for a good month, month and a half, and then uh, intersected with the Priest tour. It's been going really, really good, man. Yeah. It must be cool, just, I mean, a band like Priest, you know, there's a sort of reputation to Absolutely, it itself, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Legendary. Yeah. Absolutely legendary. Yeah, and they're killing it every night. Yeah. Oh, good for them. Yeah, even though KK can't be with them, Richie's yeah. playing with them and he's doing a great, great job. It's a lot of fun. And uh, not to mention the Priest fans. Watching just had the fervent. These people are so crazy. They're just they're they're, hell for love. They, yeah. <laughs> they're they're ready, breaking the law. Yeah, they're ready the to jacket go. on as well, so you're yeah. ready to roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good to go. It's, it's been a great tour with them. I think uh, tomorrow night's our last yeah. night with Priest. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay, cool. And a bit of fun for a while. I mean, I was looking at the schedule and you've got a few dates coming up. You're sort of carrying on in. Is it carrying on through Europe or is it sort of winding down now? No, this is the wind down for us. We'll do uh, tomorrow with Priest and then Monday we're, we're doing a little uh, impromptu show uh, in London. Yeah, crowbar. Nice. Don't ask yeah. me how that's all gonna work. It, it's but it's smaller than this tent if you've been there before. Oh, I know. Yeah. 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 I don't even know how we're gonna get our equipment in there, but they've I asked no us idea. to do this, and it's gonna be interesting. And they got good whiskey. You know. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, and then uh, back to the states, make our way from New York back to California, and then do some television, and then. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do a late night show. Yeah. Right home, and then uh, out to, to Japan. Japan. Nice. Yeah, yeah. from there. We come home for a little break and then we're back across the United States to Canada. Never stops. And then we're back here in November. So I mean, I mean, looking at the band, I mean, the first time I kind of heard about you guys, I think I picked up an EP somewhere along the line, and I'd read that it was a, it was one of these rock bands coming out of Los Angeles. So I'm thinking that there is a sort of a bit of a at the moment a stereotypical opinion of a Los Angeles band. And I put your CD in, and I'm like, wow, this isn't what I was thinking of. You're kind of very more stepped back into that kind of the, the blues, kind of that tapping into kind of the root of rock and roll, so to speak, and stuff. Yeah. So, Signing is all, I mean, obviously, it was a big influence and stuff, and you're not kind of the typical American band, would you say, at the moment? Or do you think you're more? Well, I'm not really sure what typical American band means when you start, once you start splitting things into genres. You know, for this genre, this is what rock and roll sounds like to us. You know, so this is the, this is where heavily blues influence, you know, so this is, this is the type of rock that we make. There are, there, there is a rock and roll scene in Los Angeles. It's not that strong. Right no, we're definitely not following any scene, you know. Yeah. You're not breaking out the hairspray then. No, this band no, no. Not this week. <laughs> you know, when we when we formed this band, there was never an idea of like, yeah, you know, there, there's this band and that band doing really good with this sound. Let's do that kind of a band. It was. It's been a, a really just a, a lifelong long mission for me of what's in my heart. And I know it's that way for the other guys as well. So when we did this band, we just made sure we connected on that same thing. Not the scene, but just what, what was in our heart, what we wanted to deliver and what we wanted to play. The, a, a very dangerous sounding, visceral, immediate rock and roll that had a lot of blues and a lot of soul in it, which is almost devoid from rock and roll today. You know, it's really hard to find those elements in rock, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, I mean, looking at the pressure and time album that you guys have got, which has been doing really well, and I think it's, I was reading about somewhere about how many YouTube hits you've racked up straight away and stuff, and then you had a, a beer commercial, was it, or a liquor commercial or something? Yeah, it's gone through it. Yeah, uh, bourbon, yeah, bourbon kind of company. Yeah. Yeah, so they picked that up really quick and really rammed it hard, yeah. Yeah, it took like a couple of weeks for us to hit half a million. Yeah, it's a root, it's a surprise. It's nice. And you go straight out to the audience, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Shocking to us, you know, very shocking. Yeah. And then looking again at, at the album, I mean, you've got you've got had someone pretty special in doing your album work. Yeah. On that one, Steve's done sort of work. Oh yeah. Zeppelin and Floyd. Was that was that something which you wanted to do because it's kind of like looking at those bands is maybe something which had inspired you in their album work, or did it just it just came along and you were like, go for it? Because it's a, it's a cool album cover, you know. Look so. at uh, you know, look at the things that Storm's done. Yeah. He made he's made some of the best album covers period you know and we really didn't intend it to be any kind of throwback idea or anything like that
like that, it was just really, we went, ah, we like the record we've made, who's going to do the cover? It was so immediate for us how we made the record, we thought, let's just let somebody do something. What's our, uh, our first reaction? My first reaction was, let's use this, you know, hypnosis, let's use, let's use Storm Ferguson, man, this is like a rare opportunity, he's in the UK, our label's in the UK, let's just do it. Yeah. Yeah, and he's an old bloke, so you know, who knows how many more he's gonna do. Let's see if he'll do one for us. You know, that'd be really fun. And what's so, that well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we made great friends with him, and uh, he's a nice man, and uh, he's brilliant. You know. You mentioned that the the album recording process was immediate. I mean, so with you one of those guys, I think I I read that you sort of pretty much came off the road and jumped in the studio, and, did, and it, yeah, you, you just exactly. you just knocked it out. Whereas a lot of bands, it's a lot more structured and it's a long winning process. How did it work for you guys? With yeah, that? it's exactly like you said. We came off of a five or six week tour, dropped our bags, uh, slept in our own beds for a night, woke up the next day and got into the studio, and uh, we made a conscious effort not to write any material. So. Uh, talk about the material and ideas on the roads, but, uh, you know, I had ideas, Jay had ideas, we just actually just decided to go in and every day and make something up, uh, just because the music we're hearing, that's what we're talking about, a lacking of this real absolute danger, you know what I mean, so we decided, let's, uh, let's not cheat anybody, let's, like, including ourselves, let's see if we can just give it to them and to each other very immediately, you know. Yeah, like, let's get in there and make a record of all the first and second takes. I mean, looking, you, you mentioned quite a lot that there, there isn't a lot out there, which is what you guys are doing and stuff. And despite the fact you're, you're still a relatively new band, in a way, I think, how long have you guys been? Is it four or five years? Two and a half, no, two and a half. We're just coming up, up on three, three years. Yeah, yeah. coming up on three years together. And so, how would you view the music, the state of music right now? I, there's tons of great stuff happening. I, I think there are records like that being made. I think, you know, uh, we mentioned uh, Jack, Jack White a lot, you know, and I think he's he's got this in ethos that's very visceral and very, like, dangerous. And you can hear crazy stuff happening. He seems to have the magic touch, doesn't he? Everything, 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 ever
with regard to sort of looking on going into the performance things, I mean, you, you say yourself that you want to bring this sort of the total performance and everything. And, you know, I, I guess people who see the bands, you know, they sort of step back and like, oh, nice one, you know. I mean, some of the guys you've opened for, I've seen you, Alice Cooper with Ace Freely, ACDC and stuff. Do you, do you still take a lot from some of those guys? Do you, do you sort of watch them through the curtain or whatever? And is it things to pick up or is it more just, I mean, someone like Alice Cooper's being... Everybody's got a different way of skinning the cat, you know, for sure. But to watch, to watch these guys, especially guys that are long in the tooth or, you know, older in their years and everything, getting to watch them be 20 years old for an hour and a half every night, that's a very special thing, you know, and, um, but just capture, it's inspiring, it's inspiring to watch somebody who knows exactly what they're doing and watch the interaction with the crowd, feeling, watching that energy exchange and everything. I think it's more of just an inspiration. Yeah. I mean, ACDC, I will say, is a ball of fire, and I definitely came away personally uh, watching the Young Brothers do what they do, and I'm like, wow, lots of energy, so much energy, that's that's four feet of energy and a ball of fire right there. Yeah. So they were, I mean, that was that was something to watch and, like, just take in on a, on a visceral level. Some of the other fellows we watch, you know, that are, that are legends, it's more of an inspiration to see them continuing and kind of for us to think, wow, if we get to that point, yeah, they're doing it. That's how it right. looks and feels, and that's really, really amazing. We saw Roger Daltrey last night, our buddy plays drums with him, and, uh, just really, really cool just to watch him, how he was doing it, what, how he felt about it, his comfort level on stage, but uh, yeah, there's always something to take away, of course. And uh, you obviously were high voltage today, and you had, you were at Sonosphere a few weeks ago. How does the sort of the festival and, and kind of the gig scene, have you noticed the sort of comparisons between sort of back in the US and then when you come out to, to Europe? Is there marked differences, or is it the same kind of feeling? Well, we're going to do uh, a Kansas festival in the U.S. We haven't done many others there. Uh, yeah, it's now, I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no strange coincidences. <laughs> yeah, but the, the festivals over here and in Europe are just out of control. It's really you no know, festival season. So, so this is where it really so happens. Lose all my money on beer. That's right. Yeah, right. And the melting pot of bands and, and the, the mismatches are just really cool. It's really, really fun. It's been really great for us. We've shared stages with uh, DJ Harvey and Portis Head, Coldplay. Uh, I mean, obviously, Jim's Priest. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of strange to come back for tour when you said that, like, well, we played with Coldplay, and then and then the next time like, it was Rob Halford coming out. Yeah, right. Responding to this piano. It's, it's Rob wonderful. Halford on my mind. It's wonderful because you know, actually, this is how we all listen yeah. to music. No one's just. I mean, that's how we listen to music. We're really, you know, going to put that on and this on, and we're going different directions every moment because it just soul that way, you know, feed, feeds the intellect that yeah, way. Nice one. Yeah, cool. Well, guys, um, so we're going to wrap it up here. It's been awesome chat to you guys. Look forward to seeing you later on. Yeah, man. Great to give some ads and then uh, see what the future holds for the rival sons. Excellent.